This is the cab end of a class 302 electric multiple unit. These units are coupling compatible with classes 304, 305, 307 and 308. Let's have a look at the cab end equipment in detail. On the driver's side is the receptacle for the 36-way control jumper. In the centre is the train brake pipe flexible hose with red coupling piece. Alongside is the main reservoir flexible hose with yellow coupling piece and with a star valve. Each of these flexible connections has a separate angle cock. At the offside we have the 36-way control jumper and dummy receptacle box. At the centre of the headstock is a drop head buckeye coupler. Now let's look at the procedure as one unit is coupled to another. The shunter is calling the train towards him. He stops the driver at least six feet short of the unit to which the attachment is to be made. He pulls the buckeye release chain to open the jaws of the coupler. Let's take a look at the buckeye itself and the requirements of the unit to which we are to couple. A buckeye coupling is really an extension of the drawbar and may be raised or lowered depending on the nature of the coupling to be made. Normally it would be in the raised position for coupling to other units and only lowered for emergency coupling. The jaws of the buckeye are opened by pulling a chain that is connected to a release mechanism. Usually only one jaw would be opened when coupling two buckeye units. A telltale pin is provided on each buckeye to indicate an unlocked jaw when the pin is up and a locked jaw when the pin is down. An attachment between two units must always be confirmed by checking that both pins are in the fully down position. The unit to which we are to attach should be fully prepared but have the automatic air brake and handbrakes fully applied. Pull forward and couple up, driver. After checking the telltale pins, the shunter will ask the driver for a pull-away test and the driver will take power in reverse. The shunter will then check with the driver that it is safe to go between the two units, fully apply the automatic air brake and remove the EP control key. Now lock the master controller and remove the master key. All right, to go in between. Thank you. He now removes the 36-way control jumper from the dummy receptacle and places it in the receptacle on the opposite unit. Making sure that the jumper plug is pushed fully home and locked in position. He now couples the train brake pipe flexible hoses and the main reservoir flexible hoses. Finally, he opens all four angle locks. The units are now coupled and ready for a brake continuity test. Do not forget to switch off any head or tail lamps between the units or to release the handbrake on the unit to which you have coupled. Now let's look at the uncoupling of two class 302 type units. The shunter first closes all four angle clocks, handles in the raised position. He then uncouples the main reservoir flexible hoses. And then the train brake pipe flexible hoses, placing the coupling ends in the receptacles provided. Finally, he removes the 36-way control jumper from its socket and replaces it in the dummy receptacle on the unit.
push the jumper plug firmly home and make sure that it is locked in position by the handle above the dummy receptacle. The driver now unlocks the brake valve in the cab from which the detachment will be made and releases the automatic air brake. The shunter will then ask the driver to ease up and then pull away. Before leaving the unit from which you have uncoupled, ensure that handbrakes are applied and tail lamps illuminated. The train man or conductor from the rearmost vehicle of the train will now ask the driver for a brake continuity test. Okay, thank you. Unlock the brake valve and place it between positions one and two. When the brake pipe pressure has risen to between 66 and 74 pounds per square inch, move the brake valve to position 3, the lamp position. Now advise the trainman or conductor that you are ready for the brake test. Hello, guard. Uh, ready for brake test now. Thank you. He will make a full application by moving the brake valve in the rear cab to position 5, reducing the brake pipe pressure to 30 pounds per square inch or less. He will then return the brake valve to position 6 and note that the brake pipe pressure does not rise. He must then advise the driver that the brake valve has been returned to position okay, 6. The driver you. must then move his brake valve to position 1 until the brake pipe pressure is restored to 66 to 74 pounds per square inch. The trainman or conductor must note the rise in brake pipe pressure and advise the driver that the test has been satisfactorily completed. Okay, brake test complete. Thank you. The air brake continuity test is absolutely vital after units or vehicles have been coupled or uncoupled. Only if brake pipe angle cocks are in the correct open position will the train pipe be continuous throughout the length of the train. If one or more of the brake pipe angle cocks should be in the incorrect closed position, the train pipe will not be complete throughout the length of the train, and beyond this point the automatic brake will be inoperative. Should it be necessary in exceptional circumstances to use a screw coupling, you must first obtain the emergency screw coupler from its position in the brake compartment. Firstly, pull each buffer out to its long position and place the saddle over the buffer shank. Ensure that each of these saddles is properly located behind the lug on the buffer head. Now pull the Buckeye release handle to open the knuckle on the Buckeye coupler. Take the weight of the Buckeye on your left forearm, lift the telltale lock of the support pin and move the support pin slightly to the left. Now taking the weight of the Buckeye on your right forearm, withdraw the support pin. You may now drop the Buckeye head. Now replace the support pin, ensuring that the telltale lock is in the lowered position. You may now place the emergency screw coupler over the exposed drawer. Now let's remove the emergency screw coupler and replace the Buckeye coupling to its raised position. Firstly, remove the saddles from the buffer shanks and replace them on the hooks provided. Push the buffers fully home to their short position.
Now remove the emergency screw coupler from the draw hook. Turn the telltale lock on the support pin and pull it partially back to clear the draw bar. Now smartly lift the Buckeye head on your right forearm and push the support pin fully home. Ensure that the telltale lock is in the lowered position. Do not forget to return the emergency screw coupler to its hook in the brake compartment. Now let's look at the procedure for coupling and uncoupling class 315 units. These units have tight lock automatic couplers. At the extreme right is the Schrader plug-in emergency air connection and behind this connection the isolating cock, the handle of which should normally be in the closed position across the pipe. Below the Schrader connection is the drum switch. Below the tight lock coupler itself is the connections block behind the cover of which are the 42-way electrical connections and the two main reservoir air connections with star valves. Behind and to the right of the coupler itself is the main reservoir pipe isolating cock. This should normally be in the open position. Coupling of these units is only performed by the driver. Before approaching the unit to which the attachment is to be made, he must ensure that at least one jaw of the tight lock automatic couplers is open. He must then check that the covers over the connection blocks on both couplings are closed. He now draws up to the unit to which the attachment is to be made, stopping six feet short of this unit. He now draws up again to stop two feet short of the unit to which the attachment is to be made. Now he may proceed to couple. He must now check that the couplings have locked by pulling away gently. Now depress the couple button on the driving desk, ensuring that the master switch is in the neutral position. The driver must now get down and check that both drum switches have moved to the coupled position. Both drum switch handles must be in the fully up position. He must now check that both butterfly indicators are visible and that there is daylight behind them. The coupling has been completed successfully. Now let's look at the uncoupling procedure. The driver must ensure that he has at least 5.2 bar of main reservoir pressure. He must fully apply the automatic brake and check that the master switch is in neutral. He now depresses the uncouple button for five seconds and then selects reverse and takes power to draw the units apart. He must ensure that the hinged covers of both connection blocks are in the fully raised position. If, after depressing the uncouple button for five seconds, the coupler locks fail to release, it may be necessary to ease up. Should the couplers still fail to unlock, it will be necessary to obtain the uncoupling bar from the nearest driving compartment. Turn both drum switches to the uncoupled position. The uncoupling bar is placed behind the uncoupling rod and then lifted smartly to manually unlock the coupler. It should then be possible to draw the units apart.
Let's have another look at this operation in detail. Once again, do not forget to ensure that the hinged covers on the connection blocks are in the fully raised position.